Hello. <laughs> uh, you know, today is going to be a fun video. I wasn't going to do a video today, but uh, I shot some clips this morning. I got to the shop and I set the shop up and then I had to run an errand and I had to meet up with a guy uh, that just bought my watch with the band, the band that I made. Kevin, cool guy. Yeah, you're going to see him. And so today is just going to be like a day in the life. This is what's happening today. So I hope you enjoy it. Always got to remind myself on overcast days. That's when it's a good time to clean your windows if they're tinted because when the sun is out, you can spray these things down and <laughs> before you even have a chance to start kind of getting them clean, the sun is just beating the glass cleaner to death. It just evaporates it. So, <laughs> I gotta do the windshield too, but I wanna get these side windows done quick. <laughs> before the sun comes out again. A nice day. <laughs> One of the nice things about having a solar generator and a fridge, which I just turned on, is I can run errands and I can get some groceries and I can keep it cool while I'm working. So these are my fixings for my stew that I'll be making tomorrow morning before I leave the house. It's uh, carrots and green beans and beef. There's some onion and uh, some other good stuff. And I love these things. It's like pork rinds here, but uh, these are the real deal. I love my ice coat stuff. I love that too. This is Kevin putting on his oh. new watch. <laughs> Busted. Okay, never coming off. Look at that. Just hold it there. <laughs> it's awesome, dude. Yeah, I can see what time it is. So, so this is a guy who wears a cowboy hat. <laughs> so there's no surprise he's pulling this off. Hmm. Very cool, dude. Dude, it's so comfortable, too. It is. And it'll just get better. Kevin was used to wearing this giant G-Shock, which means that this big old thousand meter diver is no big deal to him, which is a thing to keep in mind. If you're not used to a big watch, it might be weird. But when you're a big guy, how tall are you, dude? I'm six foot. Yeah, it's a big guy <laughs> wearing a big watch. All right, so yesterday I milled all these parts and these are going to be the pedestal base assembly. Uh, I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a, uh, a rudimentary kind of rough sketch of what I'm doing. The dimensions mentioned in that sketch have nothing to do with this one, really. Uh, they were something for me to uh, kind of compare to. Several years ago, a friend of mine. Uh, she had a slab. It was a coffee table. It was in her family for decades. It was pretty beat up. And she wanted to make it into a pedestal table. So I thought about it and I came up with this system. And this is the same system I'm going to use on this table. So you guys will see that. So those dimensions were for her, for that particular table. But the principles, the joinery that's going on in it, uh, it still, you know, obviously it's appropriate for what I'm going to do here. Funny thing, not funny was yesterday when I was doing this, these two parts here on the bottom are the vertical parts. These two big honking pieces up here, this is the X that's gonna be on the bottom, and then these two parts right here, they're gonna be the part that supports the top. So they, they sit on top of the pedestal uh, legs, again, right here. And uh, so I got that all done and I was cutting these to length. Finished height is going to be 42 inches. Thickness of the top, which is now hidden underneath these here, uh, is an inch 
and three sixteenths. And I want to put pad feet on all four corners. You want four small points of contact with anything, table or whatever, because that's going to give you your more, most stable base. If you have, you see tables sometimes, it'll be like some long run piece of wood that the legs are sitting on. Well, that's going to rock. If your floor is uneven, that's going to rock. You have to wedge things under it. So four small points of contact are important because I used purple heart for the uh, butterfly mortises, I want to use purple heart for the feet, for those little tiny feet. Somewhere in here I have, somebody gave me a bunch of purple heart years ago and I have it, but as I was cutting it up, the problem was with the, was the furniture that they had made back in the day. Somebody used these as splines to glue the purple heart together. So it wasn't gonna work. And I had this one big piece of purple heart here. So I had to cut a section out of it Again, here's the table, and here's, I even sketched it. The little pad feet here. This is not to scale, obviously. That's my original working sketch uh, to convince the client. So I had this piece of purple right here, I cut that out, and I made the four pad feet. So now I can subtract uh, this thickness from the overall length on uh, these two pieces as well, so that when it's all said and done, it's gonna sit at about 42 inches high. But I'll tell you what, cutting that little piece out of that board and making these little things took a lot of time because that's very rough. It's hardwood. I had a millet on the, on the, on the face joint, it, mill and edge to 90 degrees. Then I had to go over here to the bandsaw. You can still see some of the dust is on there. I had to resaw it. Then I had a thickness plane it. You know, then I had to cut them to length, right? <laughs> so... Yeah, it doesn't sound like much, but I mean, that takes a lot of time to make these four little things. And that's the thing about making furniture, you know, it's, it's not, the parts aren't sitting around here, man. You have to conceive the whole, the whole idea. Then you got to make all those parts. I mean, even just getting these yesterday to, you know, these two to be exactly the same, these two to be exactly the same, those two there to be exactly the same. Yeah. It takes all stinking day to do stuff like that. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. Anyhow, this will probably be the end of this video. I don't know. We'll see.
Lord shaking Steve Mercurio with the fugitive kind. <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't do it anymore. Shaking Steve, man. DJ at Yakety Yak back in the day in Seaside Heights. <clears throat> Original bass player for Drama Rama. He grew up with those guys. Uh, John Easdale, Marky Boy. I know all of these guys. Uh, but uh, yeah, good times, good times. Good dude. Talked to him the other day. You know, cool guy. Drives a 57 Chevy. One of my all-time favorite people. Anyhow, I thought you guys get a kick out of that. This is upside down. I think. I guess I'll have to figure that out. That was for your uh, listening pleasure. So I just wanted to mention, um, as I'm working my way around what I'm doing here, this guy uh, that you just saw, Kevin, He's such a nice guy, and I, I, uh, I told him, I said something to him, which is how I feel about, I think all of you, everybody who's here uh, watching on the channel here. Um, I met several of you people at the Tacopa meet and greet, and I have to say, I feel like, I feel like my subscribers are some of the just nicest people, like the nicest human beings. I'm, uh, I'm really pleased with that. I'm pleased with you. I have not yet met somebody who watches my channel that I feel like is a schmuck. So thank you for that. That's all I want to say. I mean, I, this guy pulled up, we started talking, and he, he's just a kind human being. He's a great guy. And this is, this is like the people who were in my life, you know, that are my real friends, like people I've known that go back decades, some of them. They're good. For the most part, they're good people. You know, you're still friends with some people that have kind of been schmucks, but you came up with them, so you know it, you know. You, don't, you tend to not allow schmucks in your life uh, as you get older. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need any more schmucks in my life. But I just want to say I'm very pleased with you guys. So thank you. That's it. A little, little, little positive message for you. Fortunately, I have another bit. This thing, uh, you just saw a snapshot. I got one side channeled out. Uh, but man, I'll tell you what, I can smell. <laughs> I can smell the brushes in this thing. So hopefully I'll get that passed on. And uh, I, I need a new, I could probably use a new router. I need like a three horsepower, three and a half horsepower router, which I, I never really used before. I mean, I've used them before, I just didn't own one. But I got to get one of those things. Uh, anyway, I'll get through this. This is the end of this video. It's not a how-to or anything else, just a day in the life of an artiste. Mm -hmm. An artiste in Los Angeles. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be good to one another. I'll catch you all in the next one.